Welcome to the session on ERP overview. We'll take a look at SAP ERP, how it started and evolved from its R1 days to current R3 and now SAP ECC days. A bit about the company history and then we will look into the SAP system and see how we work with the key components of SAP. A quick history of the company and the products. SAP started in 72 and was founded by five former IBM employees. Just one year later, it released the first accounting software that was called the RF software, which subsequently came to be known as the R1 release. In 79, it released the R2 system, which was a result of new hardware and software provided by IBM. In 91 was the release of SAP R3 and this was presented at the CBIT, the annual SAP conference in Hanover, Germany. This product met with overwhelming approval due to its client server concept, uniform appearance of graphical interfaces, consistent use of relational databases and the ability to run on computers from different providers. In 1999, the CEO Hasso Plattner at that time uh, announced the MySAP.com strategy, which basically was a way of connecting the backend ERP system to the latest e commerce platforms. In 2004 was the launch of SAP NetWeaver, which was the new integration and application platform. Current focus is on real-time data with offerings around HANA and uh, the business suite which encompasses ERP, CRM, SRM and other SAP products. You can see more about SAP's history at the link here below. and you can read more about how the company evolved and its product offerings developed. A quick look at how the ERP market and the definition itself evolved. In the early 70s, there was no real concept of an ERP system. With its R1 system, SAP developed a software product that handled process data in real time and saved it to a central database. This meant that companies could access their own data quickly and have a high level of control and transparency. In the 80s, these systems came to be known as standard ERP systems. Since SAP had broken new ground in this area, it became the market leader. In the 90s, e-commerce became popular. As a result, business processes were defined that stretched across the company boundaries. Planning data from business partners was used to optimize companies' supply chains. Sales orders were not only entered directly in the ERP system, but also in the field-by-field -field service employees using mobile devices. These new functions led to the development of new products. Such new dimension products led to an enhancement of the ERP functions. In 2003, SAP redefined the concept of an ERP system. It is no longer a system with a database. Instead, it is a combination of products covering basic processes such as purchasing, sales and production. In the area of human resources, accounting and basis technology, it corresponds to the enhanced solutions of the new dimension products. This SAP ERP solution is compatible with additional components, enabling business processes to be defined on a cross-company level. We now try to log into the SAP ERP system. The SAP GUI program connects the front-end computer with a specific SAP system at the back-end. To start the SAP GUI, SAP provides another program, SAP Logon, which has to be installed by your administrator onto your laptop or your machine. When you call up SAP Logon, 
a window displays a list of the SAP systems for which you can start the logon process. So this is the list of systems that we can log on to. This list is derived from a file on the front-end computer, saplogon.ini file. This file is normally pre-configured centrally and made available to end users. During logon, the SAP logon program also enables logon load distribution, which basically means that if there are thousands of users logging on at the same time, uh, the load would not go to one server, would but would be distributed to many servers that are typically present in a production environment. So we now log on to the ERP6 which is the latest release of SAP ERP. And we get this screen. Essentially the key elements of the screen are the client the user ID, password and the language. So the client is something that is provided by the administrator along with the user ID and the password. So my user ID on this system is user35. I enter my password, choose my language and then I just enter the system. I can also set a new password using the icon here. So when I log in, this is what my screen looks like. I see the standard SAP menu. I can also have a user role based menu. So if I go to menu, I see the user menu is grayed out because the system settings have not been made for the user menu. So what I see is the SAP standard menu. What you can also see here is the system you're logged in. So if I scroll down a little bit, and I click on this button I should be able to see further details like which system am I logged on to what's my client what's my user ID which program am I running currently what's the transaction code for that program we'll go to transaction codes in a in a bit the response time and some other technical details. So all these details are retrieved from the button here. What I can also do is when I type in my data I can use insert mode or overwrite mode just by clicking on it I can change. I can go to a specific transaction in the standard SAP menu so for example let's go and see how we create a sales order so I go to logistics sales and distribution order create so if I double click here the system will take me to a screen wherein I can create a sales order so this is what the screen looks like create sales order initial screen we'll come back to the screen in a little bit but essentially if my job involves creating sales order very regularly I can simply add this transaction to my favorites so you see the favorites folder here if I add this transaction this is linked to my favorites now now there are multiple ways of getting to the transaction one is via using the menu and double clicking when you finally reach the transaction you want to work with the other one is the transaction code so to create a sales order the transaction code is VA01 as you get more experience with working with the system you can simply type in VA01 here at the top command menu press enter and it takes you to the sc same screen in favorites you can also add transactions and other objects other objects can be a URL for example so I might want to type search with Google
and then when I double click on this it will open a new browser window so let's have a quick look at that so there you go the Google window is opened triggered by my favorites within SAP if you want to work with more than one SAP window open there are two ways of doing it you go to this icon at the top here I'll just make it a little more visible one here and you say create a session so now I've got two sessions running in parallel the other way is to you go back and log in again while you initially logged in already SAP will give you a warning so let's see what happens so I now try to log in when I already logged in so I get a message saying multiple logons to the production system using the same user are not part of the license agreement now this is not a production system but this error is still generated so I have an option to terminate this logon or to continue with both logs on, logons at the same time so for now we'll terminate this and go back to our two logons here a shortcut again a command line if you want to create multiple logons is simply slash o this is generate and there so that's another way of coming up with a second window now some of these commonly used commands are very useful to know and uh, we will just see some of the most popular ones so here are the most frequently used commands slash n cancels the current transaction slash o that we've just seen it creates another session uh, initially displays the overview of all the sessions you have and then you can generate another one and so on so these are some of the useful and frequently used commands that might be good to know about we will now take a look at using help and personalizing the user interface so let us go back to our transaction of create order so this is my initial screen now if you go to sales organization and press F1 you get information about this field what is it all about and how to use it pressing F1 will give you information on the field and how to use it it will also give you technical information so if I go to technical information so it'll tell me what the screen number is what the program is the table the field name and more importantly the parameter ID VKO now we will see how this parameter ID is used say if I enter hundreds of orders every day and for each order I have to manually enter in this information is there a way I can default it because there may be several sales organization in the SAP setup as you can see there are hundreds 103 entries but I want to default a specific one the one where I work the one in my country so I open up another session slash zero and now I go to a transaction for maintaining user profiles now in the parameters I scroll down and I enter VKO and I enter the sales org 0001 which is the sales org that I normally work with I save and now when I launch the sales order create transaction 
I should automatically get 0001 sales org defaulted and there you go so this is how you personalize the system and reduce manual data entry going back to user maintenance su3 I can also set my default so decimal notation date format my time zone default language etc we now take a look at some system wide concepts underlying the SAP system if you have to work with an SAP ERP system you must know the meaning of these key concepts and how to work with them so the first one is organization this is a company's enterprise structure mapped on to SAP applications using SAP's organizational elements the master data is created centrally and available to all the applications and all the authorized users master data also has an organizational aspect because its information is organized into views that are assigned to organizational elements transactions are application programs that execute business processes in the SAP system examples include creating a sales order that we saw previously changing a customer master or displaying a sales order list report for example so here is an example of how the SAP's organizational elements are set up to map on to a real company at the top of the hierarchy you have the client the client is the highest level element of all the organizational elements it represents the enterprise the headquarters or the main group holding company below this is the company code company code is a legal independent accounting unit representing the central organizational elements of financial accounting the company code also represents the tax law represents the fiscal calendar the local currency and the tax reporting requirements several company codes can be grouped in a controlling area for example Europe could be a controlling area where the company codes are Germany France etc so controlling area is essentially a grouping organizational structure entity org unit and position are HR human resources related org units so the org unit here describes the various business units that exist in an enterprise often units are loosely defined as functional or regional departments positions are individual employee assignments in the enterprise so position could be sales rep head of department service engineer and so on a sales organization is the central organizational elements in sales order management that controls the terms of sale to the customer a plant can manufacture products distribute products or provide a service the plant is the central organizational unit for production storage locations are sub units under the plant level plant material stocks in inventory management can be differentiated according to storage location so for example in a steel plant you might have raw material in one storage location and work in progress in another one and finished goods in a third storage location all under the same plant the master data is essentially of three different types customer master material master and personnel master shown on the next slide so let's talk about customer master first a customer master contains key information that defines the business relationship between a company and its customer company code data controls the posting procedures and subsequent processing such as payments and dunning 
Sales organization data provides information on customers for support execution of such processes as entering sales orders, shipping, billing, and processing payments. The customer master's three-part structure is represented by general data. This data is equally relevant to every company code and every sales organization within a company. The general data is normally at this level, the client level. Then you have the data for company code. This data reflects company specific agreements with the customer and then data for sales. This data has different characteristics for a company's sales organizations and channels. Next you have the material master. The material master contains all the key information a company needs to manage a material within its organization. The material master defines how a product is sold, manufactured, purchased, inventoried, accounted, and calculated. The information in the material master is grouped into views that are organized by business functions as shown here. The majority of the views you should keep in mind are at the plant level for a material master. Then we have the personal record. Personnel files are master data records used primarily by SAP HR, Human Resources, or now known as HCM, Human Capital Management. These master records follow the same basic segmented structures as do the other master records. The org elements used by SAP HR are unique and as a group they are referred to as org management. Not to be confused with the overall org management, this is HR specific org management. So at the highest level is the HR org unit. This describes the various business units that exist in the enterprise. Multiple org units and their relationships form the org structure. Org units can be loosely defined as functional or regional departments or as a project group depending on the type of organization. Positions are the individual employee assignments in the enterprise and persons occupy these positions. A position inherits a job's characteristics but you can also define additional characteristics specific to that position. A person holds positions within the org structure. Persons represent employees in your company. Transactions are application programs that execute SAP business processes in the system. Whenever possible, master data is copied into the transaction avoiding re-entry of data. For example, when executing the transaction create sales order, the user must enter the customer master number. This number is copied into all of the relevant customer information. Likewise, once the material master number is entered, the relevant material data will be copied into the sales order. Whenever a transaction is executed in the system, a document is created. This document, a data record of the transaction, contains all of the relevant predefined information from the master data and org elements. So let's have a look at the system now to see how we deal with master data and how we create transactions. So let us first look at the customer master. So where do you expect to find the customer master? Under sales, logistics, sales and distribution, master data, business partner. So you have different types of business partners. We want to look at customer. Incidentally, if you don't know where in the menu to look for a specific node, you can always use this search. So let me try to look for customer. Let me first collapse this. So say I don't know how to find my customer node. Just enter it here, find and directly you are at the correct place. So customer, I want to display my customer 
and I want to display the complete data. The difference is, as you saw earlier, there are multiple views that the customer may have. We want to look at all the views and not just the ones relevant for sales and distribution. So I double click and this information is pre-entered. If it's not, you'll have to enter it manually. So this is my customer and this is the customer master view in SAP ERP. On the top you see different sets of data. So you have company code data, sales area data and general data. So the one we are looking at now, this is sales area data. It has all the sales relevant details, shipping details, the billing details, and the partner functions involved. So this is my material master and this is what it looks like and I can make any changes that I need to make over here. Now let's have a quick look at the material master. So I don't know where my material might be so let me just use this search help material management that's where I expect to find my material master if the system finds more than one results of your search it will take you to the very first one but you can click on this next item to go to the next one so material was the first one the system found then material price if I continue doing that I should be able to reach my material master relatively quickly but of course once you work with the system you know where exactly you would hope to find the material master that's under logistics material management and right here is material master so instead of searching for material like I did had I searched for material master let me just close this node first and then search for material master. I'll go straight here. So we want to display. Now the difference between these two display current and at key date is that you can make changes to a material master which are active only at a future date so you can do your material planning accordingly what we want to see is material at the current date the system says which views do I want to see so as you can see here there are so many different views grouped under uh, main tabs like sales view MRP view and so on and I can select one or more views to work on I'll just select them all for now and now I need to enter my organizational level so this material might be existing for different plants and for each plant it might have a different um, say valuation price or other characteristics so the system is saying which plants characteristics corresponding to this material do you want to see now so I have a plant in mind which is 1200 and the sales uh, is 1000 and I press enter and so I go to my material master now if you scroll to the right you'll find that I can quickly jump to different views so I jump to MRP1 directly I can either use these tabs here or I can use this list here I also have additional data which I can enter descriptions unit of measures and I have the org levels as well where I can see this materials uh, features at a specific storage location which I didn't enter in the beginning
I can classify the material especially I am working with configurable materials typical example is the car industry where you might have as a back office entity uh, the color of a car the shade the tires and so on and so forth that's when you typically use configurable materials and this is my basic data one where you have volume weight various sorts of details so this was a quick look at the material master now let's look at what a transaction might look like so now we will create a transaction we will not create an order but we will create a quotation so the transaction code for a quotation is VA21 but if you do not know that you can quickly search for where a quotation might be it's likely to be under sales and distribution there you go and you have a quotation I create a quotation this is a standard quotation type and this information has been defaulted from my profile and I enter my customer and I enter my material 578 I need to enter the quantity as well if I don't I will get an error so let's see how that works this is my error enter order quantity the system will tell you what you've missed out so I enter quantity 1 and everything has been defaulted all I've done is enter my customer material but you find that all this information at the header level and at the item level has been taken from the customer master and from the material master so this is the header level tabs and if I go here and double click I can see the item level tab so for this sales document item this material all these so my quotation is ready I have got a price for the quote and I can just save it at which the system will generate a unique number that represents uh, the quote I'm getting a warning message saying there is some information that the system still needs I can save it and the system will generate the number but let's just have a look at what is the incomplete information uh, it wants to know till when is the quotation valid a quotation typically has validity dates from and to so we need to enter those here so let's just do that so it's just valid for one day and then I get the message that my document is complete let me try to save it once saved successfully I should get a unique number representing this quotation and I've got this number which I can see by saying display this is my number and this is my quotation that I created so this is how the transactional document brings together different elements of data from the master data elements hope you enjoyed this session see you again soon